<clears throat> so here's a question. Could you do a vlog about paleo again? The CrossFit community is heavily promoting the paleo and zone diet. The goal is optimal fitness. I was searching if there's any truth to it. They basically eat little to no starches and still thrive. Okay, let's check it out. So who have we got on the paleo list? We got Lauren Cordain. Let's check out Lauren. Lauren Cordain está em Portugal, professor catedrático e investigador na Universidade do Colorado. Wow, look at Lauren's little belly going on there. Hang on. And this is only in 2009. I mean, Lauren's like a, an authority on paleo nutrition. He says it makes you lean, fit and strong. You eat like a caveman. Well, looks like Lauren's belt is holding his pants up because uh, was, you know, maybe you should tuck that stomach in a bit more so people like me won't ridicule him. But again, this Lauren's, I'm sure he's a nice guy. This is just a physiological assessment because, hey, if you write books about diet and nutrition and talking about primal fitness, then you've got to expect people to put the spotlight on you. And today I'm putting the spotlight on Lauren Cordain. Verdict, fat. Lauren Cordain, his partner in crime is Joe Frail, and I'm a big fan of Joe Frail. I've been reading his books for literally 12 years about cycling training, and he's got some amazing concepts. I currently ride the midfoot cleat position on my bike, and I think Joe's a, a genius when it comes to uh, sports physiology. But when it comes to nutrition, <laughs> Joe, when it comes to nutrition, Joe didn't drop the ball. He never had it to start with. So basically, the premise is, you know, 10,000 years ago, we changed our diet, processed foods, you shouldn't eat them. And they're going about, you know, you shouldn't eat processed foods, but you can buy commercial products such as UltraFit Recovery, you know, but don't eat processed food because that's bad, but this is good because we sell it, we make a commission, maybe, and then we've got, you can eat a banana, you know, or some little bit of glucose powder, such as Carbo Pro, but hey, you don't eat processed food. You know, so we're sending out mixed messages here. Then we've got protein powder. Then we've got whey powder. We've got salt. I mean, paleo crew didn't have pinches of salt back in then, back in the day. No, the only sodium they got was from their food. It wasn't added. So it's, uh, you know, again, very confusing. And now he says to consume non-optimal foods such as pasta, bread, bagels, rice, corn, other foods in glu rich in glucose. I mean, because you can't eat fruit, but perhaps you can. Perhaps the perfect stage four foods of raisins, potatoes, sweet potatoes, and yams. Yet, we have the original poster thing. They basically eat little to no starches and still thrive. What we do see is these people do not follow what they preach. They do not follow their diet. They, why? Because they're weak or lying or whatever. No, they can't follow their diet because it's physiologically impossible. You're going to have to binge out on the ice cream sooner or later because your diet's so void of carbohydrates. And then Joe talks about, during times you when training is greatly reduced, the athlete must limit core intake to prevent unwanted weight gain. Is that because eating so much meat? I mean, you know, meat doesn't make you lean. Meat makes you fat. Just ask my next-door neighbor. Ask your next-door neighbor. Ask the fat person you know who's really fat. Do they, are they a vegan? Of course not. And I'm not talking about young people, I'm talking about older people. Use, use people who are over 40 or 50, you know, as, as examples. Because when you're young, you can eat Big Macs and look all right. But look at older people. So these guys, they're over, over 50, and they're showing a bit of weight. Excess weight. Negative weight. And then we have here, Joe Frail, the champion coach. He says, rapid recovery is the biggest issue facing such an athlete. And we have here the little conclusion the keys to optimum recovery is sleep and diet, I agree. Even though we recommend that everyone eat a similar to what our Stone Age ancestors ate, we realize that nutritional concessions must be made for the athlete who is training at high volume in the range of 10 to 35 hours a week. So we're saying that Stone Age diet is the best, but if you're an athlete, you can't do it, and you've got to make concessions. While it's not impossible to recover from such training loads in the paleo diet, it is somewhat more difficult to recover quickly. But modifying the diet... You can do it. You know what I mean? So again, this is our original poster, this guy here. He's, he's thinking that these people are doing little starches to no starches. But the reality is you can do that. But even in Joe Frail's own words, you will not be able to recover real quickly. It's somewhat more difficult to recover quickly when you're following the paleo diet unless you add in more carbohydrates. So Joe Frail says it himself. 
you know, Joe Flower, what's his diet like? And again, we've got Aboriginal posters saying, oh, these, these, the CrossFit crew eat no or little starches and still thrive. Let's look at what Joe Flower eats. Coffee for breakfast. Last time I checked, cavemen didn't drink coffee. Last time I checked, they didn't have oil either. Last time I checked, turkey, farm turkey was not around then. So we've got 22 grapes. I mean, who counts their grapes? I certainly don't. I can't buy the kilo, not by the individual things. Fish oil capsules. Hang on. They weren't around in paleo days. The cliff bar wasn't around in paleo days. That's carbs. So we've got carbs, 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 carbs. Coca-Cola. <laughs> carbs, 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 carbs. Black rice, carbs, beer, carbs, brownie, carbs, and more fish oil. So basically, it's a high carbohydrate diet. It's pretty low in fat. It's pretty low in protein as well. I've done the math on this one, and I came up with about 73% calories coming from carbohydrates. And it was about 15% roughly each for fat and protein in terms of total calories. So again, our original poster assumes they basically eat little and no starches and still thrive. But we see Joe Frail, who is the co-author of The Paleo Diet for Athletes. This is what Joe's really eating. And I applaud Joe for his transparency, because I think he's a great guy. Coffee, oil, you know, fish oil tablets, cliff bars, Coca-Cola. <laughs> you know, I mean, these people are just, uh, you know, interesting. Beer, brownies, and more rice. So, you know, I think my tip for Joe would be to add more carbohydrates, more fruit in, and he wouldn't need the, the beer and the uh, brownies and the coffee to wake up. And then we have Sean Croxton. Sean Croxton, this is Sean here. He goes by the 80-20 rule. 80% of it, do it right, and 20% do whatever. So Sean's enjoying his 80-20 uh, rule there. This is Sean's website, undergroundwellness.com, very popular forum. And Sean says, only eat fruit if it's in season. <laughs> and when it's not in season, guess what's in season? My protandium. What is that? That's an antioxidant supplement. You know, so again, it says it's got more than oranges or wine. You know, so again, these people were saying, don't eat too much fruit because <laughs> it's got too much sugar in it. But hey, man, my supplements are always in season. And, you know, Sean said you can't be a vegan because you won't get enough protein, you know, blah, blah, blah. And in actual fact, Sean's not even that muscly. I know vegan bodybuilders who have more muscle than Sean. So he sells meat, and he also sells protein powder. But, uh, you know, you can't get enough protein as a, a vegan, so eat meat and buy the protein powder. Interesting. And then we have good old Mark Sisson, health guru Mark Sisson, now, Mark promotes a high-fat, low-carb diet for weight loss. And he says that's the secret. But when we scale on the internet, we see the other secrets are at. So, I'll share a painless diet tip. One of my big secrets of maintaining a lean body is eating a massive salad for lunch. And he says this will only set you three or 400 calories. The great thing is that I feel like I'm picking out because I'm getting so much feeling dense food. Vegetables leave you feeling stuffed. So how come Mark has to eat foods that are high volume, low calorie if his high fat diet of chickens and ostriches and stuffed pig legs makes you lean? Interesting. So Mark's on a bit of a calorie restriction thing as well. But let's look what Mark eats during the day. Hey, we've got more coffee. These paleo guys love their coffee. Starbucks, anything extra bold. <coughs> Teaspoon of sugar, whipped cream. I mean, that's really paleo. Oh, that's really, no, sorry, that's primal. It's not paleo, it's primal. <laughs> Another marketing term. I mean, coffee's really primal. Whipped cream's primal. Refined sugar's primal. Breakfast, three scoops of vanilla cream primal fuel. Did they even use the word vanilla cream back in primal days? You know. And, uh, so a bit of frisbee, awesome. And lunch, eggs, Macadamia nuts. So Mark's following a pretty low-carb, high-fat diet here. Big cup of coffee again. I'd need a big cup of coffee too if I was eating that low-carb. Handful of cherries. Handful of cherries. This is how fruit fabric these guys are. 
But, uh, you know, a glass of Cabernet, it's okay. More chocolate primal fuel, because <laughs> that's really primal. That's what they had back in the day, wasn't it? Caveman days. And uh, Sonoma Cura, they had, that in this, they had butter in the same, in the Palo days, didn't they? Not. More coffee, more primal fuel, supplement powders. Snack, half a tin of sardines. Who eats half a tin? You know, I think if you're going to eat a, a tin of cat food, you may as well eat the whole thing. It's uh, two glasses, sir. Who needs dessert? Sounds like Mark's getting hungry for some sweets there. Admit that I picked at a few potatoes too. Again, our thing, uh, original poster thinks they basically eat no little starches and still thrive. So what we're seeing is we're just seeing people who are running on stimulants and having, you know, bit of alcohol and coffee and potatoes on the, on the side, you know. Interesting. So I hope that makes sense. Um, back to Joe Frail. I love Joe's Frails. He says, by the way, it's all right to cheat on your diet. In fact, you should. Having a small dessert after a meal will not have any negative consequences for performance and may do wonders for your peace of mind. My favorite is gourmet double chocolate cookies. On days that I work out, I'll have one or two of them for dessert after dinner. Having an occasional baked potato or infrequent pasta side dish is okay. What we're trying to avoid in the base period is diet dependent on moderate to high glycemic carbohydrate foods while emphasizing fat. I mean, you know, Joe Frow is normally so objective, but here he's really subjective. I mean, most fruit is low to moderate. You know, you can get a lot of grains that are low to moderate. <sighs> He never talks about how many calories you should eat, but then when he does, again, like I said before, he says, actually, this diet will not give you quick recovery, and you must modify it. Answer your question, Patrick. So basically, we have Croxton, Mark Sisson, Joe Frail, Lauren Cordain, all the CrossFit guys. They're drinking lots of coffee. They're drinking alcohol. They're great guys, and they say, you've got to cheat on your diet because you can't really sustain it all the time. I even heard Sean Croxon say the other day in Kevin Jarney's uh, health debate, he says, oh, you, you, you're a bit of a weirdo if you do it all the time. So does that make sense? These diets are fad diets. They are not sustainable. And then we, they are not sustainable. Even Barry Sears, he's the inventor of the zone diet. I mean, <laughs> I've got a photographer friend and I asked him about this photo and he says, if, you, if you're overweight, lean forward. Lean forward and you get a better shoulder line. <laughs> so we can see good old Bazzy Barry Sears, inventor of the zone diet, is uh, is battling the bulge here because he's only got a, <laughs> a headshot. Couldn't find anything on the on the internet with him. So you know, good old Barry Barnes. Then we have Gary Torbs, author of Big Fat Lies. This is the guy who says that fat makes you lean, carbohydrates make you fat. So it looks like maybe Gary's been eating too many bowls of organic steamed rice with bananas. Not. This is Dr. Kendrick, who has the book out called The Great Cholesterol Con. And a little j you know, jowy neck says that you can eat as much cholesterol as you want, and it's all a myth. Look at the inflammation in that face. And what's this person eating here? Are they eating bananas and rice? Or is it, looks like, cow and chicken? And that, that she actually eats a lot of bananas, that's why she's overweight. And these are the guys who make... And what's this guy eating? Well, he's, he's cooking up some bananas there. He's not cooking up meat. And we have Daniel Vitalis, another fruit phobic. He's a uh, he's growing a little bit of a uh, little bit of keg there. And this is David Wolf, the guy who says bananas are bad for you. Looking pretty out of shape as well. And then we have Sally Fallon, all for her. The president of the Western Price Foundation says that you should be eating lots of uh, animal fat. 
but we can see Sally's quite out of shape there, and someone's photoshopped my face and Fairley's face on there. Susan Schenk, again, fruit's bad, fruit makes you fat, and uh, stay away from carbohydrates, eat more fat. And that's the, that's the photo Sally Fallon puts on the back of a book, but this is what she really looks like. Big difference. Richard Johnson, another person who says fruit makes you fat, it's too much sugar. Dave Wolf, looking a bit pudgy there, brother. Fruit's bad, don't eat bananas, got chocolate. This is a guy that's into raw foods, meat style, says fruit's bad. I'm not sure what to say about that one. Here's a paleo dinner. Because you can't, can't be a vegan. Got to eat animal fat and protein and some vegetables there. And this is a casualty from someone working in the meat industry. Sliced fingers. Ouch. That's a Western A price meal of uh, some sort of fat and blood. And that's Daniel Vitalis again. <laughs> Would you take this guy seriously? And this is Leah Keith. You know, she's so fatigued, she's got the tree holding her up. She says that you can't eat. If you, if you lived on tree fruits alone, you'd literally be dead in two or three months. And uh, you can see Leah Keith struggling with the Battle of the Bulge. She says she was a vegan for 20 years, but actually she ate eggs and dairy every chance she got, as I've indicated in other videos. Just type in vegetarian myth into YouTube. What's this guy eating? Looks like he's eating a banana. And then so then we have Scott Jurek, who's like an ultra marathoner, high carbohydrate, long time vegan. He blows the myth that carbs make you fat. Got Kevin Park, another vegan athlete, high carb. Scott Jurek there smashing the US uh, 24 hour running record last year. Carl Lewis, vegan. Dave Zabriskie, vegan. This guy here. This is Noah Hannibal. He's a 2010 Australian heavyweight bench press champion, so he could outlift Sean Croxton, Mark Sisson, Paul Check, all those guys, man. He's been a vegan for 17 years. So, uh, that's interesting. Rob Bigwood, he's, uh, he's a character, he's an arm wrestler. Don't, mess, don't, don't steal his tofu burger. Chris Califaro, raw vegan bodybuilder. Dr. Ruth Heindrich. One of the most successful triathletes ever. Scott Spitz, uh, he's a 225 marathoner. You've got Brendan Brazier, author of The Thrive Diet, professional Ironman triathlete. you got Mike Mailer, vegan kettlebell dude. you got Tim Van Orden from RunningRaw.com. Tim Van Orden recently got fourth in the Empire State Building Run-Up, which is one of the premier, which is the premier you know, building runs in the world. So he, he got fourth, not in his age group, he got fourth overall. I think he's obviously 42 now, Timmy is. Got an Israeli vegan bodybuilder, AL. Nathaniel Jackson. Another German bodybuilder. You got Mike Arnstein, 228, Boston. You got Six Pack Seb from California. You got Doug Graham here. So Doug Graham, you know, like, a lot of people say, oh, you guys are young, you guys run marathons, blah, blah, blah. Okay, fair enough. Here we go, we've got Doug Graham. So he's up there with Joe Frail and Lauren Cordain and Mark Sisson and all those guys in terms of age. But look at him, man. He's in the best shape. And I can guarantee you he's not taking human growth hormone. He's not taking steroids. He's not taking Dynabol. You know, he's not having, a, you know, plastic surgery on his mouth. This is Doug, man. Doug Graham. The dude that eats the most fruits and veggies out of anyone in the world. So if anyone says that fruit makes you fat or whatever, or fruit you know makes you emaciated or whatever, just look at Doug. If someone says fruit rots your teeth, Doug's got all his teeth in, man. You know. So uh, there's some examples there for you. So judge by results versus theory. And whenever someone's got some little plastic gimmicky bullshit to sell you, you know maybe just uh, question them for a bit and say, can I do this diet without buying your stuff? And if I can't, you know. Maybe it's not as paleo or as primal as you think.
This is Rory Friedman, author of Skinny Bitch. This is Mac Danzig, who is a current UFC fighter and a vegan. This is Freely when she was on a primal diet, paleo diet, Macola style thing, metabolic typing. And this is her now. Vegan. <laughs> Raw. This is Joel Kakilis, vegan bodybuilder in Melbourne. His website is veganstrength.org. And we have Robert Cheek's book, Vegan Bodybuilding and Fitness. So, uh, anyone who says you can't build size and healthy strength as a vegan, you know, there you go. Then we have Kenneth Williams, another vegan bodybuilder. And we have Gio Camo Machis, another vegan, raw vegan bodybuilder. End of story. Judge by results, not by theory. The CrossFit crew got some good training tips, but when it comes to nutrition, man, those, cr those crew wouldn't have a clue because they're cheating on their diets, they're using stimulants, they're just confused as, and they say vegan is dogma. I'll tell you what dogma is. Dogma means opinion. Dogma is a Latin word for opinion. So here we have pastured chicken slaughter. Now this is an organic, local, sustainable, compassionate, humane way of producing chicken meat. For all you people out there who do your CrossFit Paleo Primal Fad Diets, I'd like to see you guys do this. Alright, we're recording. Wobble around the wind, the cradle. Good cut, huh? Not bad.